What's going on guys, it's Ramsey Russell back with another video. As you can see, we're here with Cough Cup 10 round one feature match. On our left, we have Cosmos. On our right, we have Mystic Mind Burn. We see getting quickly right into the action here. Um, start off on Cosmos side with a pile of extravagance, Drew 2, set to normal swimming farm girl. Now we're passing on to Mystic Mind Burn. We activate the Mystic Mind, of course, standard. If you don't see Mystic Mind, I don't know how you win this game. Then we're going to set one, set two, set three, and looks like it might be a pass. Yeah, we're going to D pass here. So we're back to Cosmos. It's good to see Cosmos. I've seen him in a while. Uh, very fun deck. Very, uh, very popular back in its in its uh, heyday. You know, pissing off burning abyss players and uh, causing us problems to no end. We're gonna see another extravagance come down here. We're gonna go ahead and draw two. Uh, see, so you have Drew Kintan. Uh, Kintan. <laughs> Ten can for turn. Excuse me. As well as a spell card. Uh, is that another extravagance? Or no, I think he shuffled his hand. Okay, I think he shuffled his hand. Never mind. Oh, yeah, I apologize for the glare on that side. It always seems to be a glare on this side when we do these. Uh, so I'm going to try to do a top down view um, next time around. We see here we activate the uh, emergency teleport. See if you have any response here. Um, usually this can tutor out your uh, starter and farm girl or go into a uh, sword trooper if you actually do play that card. They're all psychics. Level 3 lower psychics as well. On top of that. Um, if you're unfamiliar with R-Type, basically what they do is they have little bodies that usually you you know pay life points or tag out to search for um, search for your larger bodies or your, your bigger boss monsters or tag out into them by banishing uh, yourself. Um, it's an archetype that's based around um, Star Wars as well as um, Wizard of Oz, I believe, with the um, lower monsters being like. Uh, like I said, lower level, weaker monsters, but they tag out into either the mid level, which are usually witches and stuff like that, or into the higher level monsters, which are um, ships. Um, See, so you're going to pass turn here, end up vanishing the uh, sword trooper off of the e Telly effect. Uh, pass the Mystic Mind. You see, they just basically drew a card and like they're comfortable here. There's no reason to actually, you know, do anything. Like we're gonna try to pass, but before I do, we're gonna have a trap card. I'm trying to figure out what this card is for the longest, but basically what I get out of it so far, the gist is that it summons out a banished monster. Um, if you know what that card is, please let me know in the comment section. Um, and then you see we're gonna attempt to do torrential tribute here to clear the board, which is pretty smart. Clears your monsters and the gears of Mystic Mind as well. But unfortunately, it appears that we have an out on a side of Mystic Mind Baron with Dark Bribe. Good old Dark Bribe. Negate. Your opponent draws a card, but you negate what you need to negate. So they're going to draw a card. We're going to pass turn, draw a card. For a turn. Uh, so we have to find a way to out these, out these bodies so we can actually get over this Mystic Mind. Or unless we have actual in deck out, which I believe Cosmojo was an in deck out, a main deck out for this. Um. Let me see if I actually have the text correct on that card. It's a trap card. Um, you can target one Cosmo monster you control destroy, and if you do a banish your card, your opponent controls are in their graveyard. So, we have that out. But you see here, we're going to go and tribute summon for our Cosmo Dark Destroyer. Then we'll attempt to do effect, because I believe it banishes for cost. If I'm not mistaken. Or are we attempting to do a destroy effect? Uh, I think we're attempting to do destroy effect, which we cannot do, unfortunately, under Mystic Mind. If I'm not mistaken, like, uh, correct me, like I said, correct, always correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, but I believe we were not able to activate our Dark Destroyer there to actually destroy itself on summon because of Mystic Mind. Um, but either way, we're going to set the game state as it is. Before we pass turn to, which these guys are going completely fast, way too fast. Mystic Mind activated um, Ojama Trio, gave our tokens to our Cosmo player, and then flipped Rivalry to Warlord. So basically locking them under the tokens. They drew for turn, passed back to Cosmos. So now Cosmos has to find a way to out these Ojama tokens. Which, if I'm not mistaken, I believe these cannot be tributed. Yeah, special summon three Ojama tokens. Um... Level two beast types. So your opponent's out of field and defense. 
They cannot be treated for tribute summon, and each time one is destroyed, your controller ever takes 300 um, damage. With their beast types, not fiends. So, what we saw was Cosmos set a, set a monster, pass turn, so uh, Mystic Mind, they set a card, pass back to Cosmos, who activate their final extravagance. Um, don't know where you go from here, because you're, you're locked under beast until you get rid of these Ojamas. I think you can link these away. But, I mean, what, what do you have left in the extra to link with Extravagance? Just basically just killing your extra deck. So we're going to pass turn to Mystic Mai. They're going to set another one here. Like, they haven't done any damage here, but they're in a comfortable spot, as you can see, because like, apparently your opponent has no out to your, your uh, Mystic Mai right now. We're going to activate Cosmo Town on Cosmo, the Cosmo player's turn here, which I don't know what this really does for you right now. Unless that, oh, wait, let me check. Let me make sure. I think there was another ability of the card. I'm totally forgetting here. Yes, the uh, reveal, reveal a hand ability. So its second ability allows you to reveal any number of cosmos in your hand. Shuffle them to the deck and then draw a card. Take the number of cards you shuffle back. So you put back three. You drew three. So I'm guessing this is a way for you to try to dig for an out. Now you see he draw, he, when he draws, he draws into that trap card that I still do not know what that card is. It's kind of bugging me. So we're gonna pass turn. Pass turn right back. Oh, this is this is some top tier Yu-Gi-Oh here, you guys. Yeah, just pass, pass. So we draw a. Um, oh, excuse me, something in my throat there. We uh, pause. We <laughs> drew for turn a compulsory uh, evacuation device, which doesn't really do anything right now. I mean, it can just bounce one of these tokens, but. What is that really solving? So we're gonna attempt to, what are we? Um, what are we? I'm sorry, I hope we weren't trying to exceed. You can't exceed with tokens, my guy. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, what does he have left? As far as his extra deck. Yeah, because we can't tribute these. Um, tribute is tribute summon and tribute set the same thing? I, because I, I understand cards that say normal summon slash sets. So is my question to you is, is tribute set the same thing? According to this, it is not. I could be wrong. Let me know in the comment section below. Like I said, I am not a judge or anything like that. I'm not a professional player by any stretch of imagination. I'm just happen to be a guy who enjoys to play the game. Actually, happens to be a little bit good at it. That's it. So, you see Mystic Mind, as usual, draws a card. May set one, may not pass his turn. Cosmo draws a card for turn. I'm guessing you're kind of just looking for a Cosmojo and uh, among other things, because you need to find a way to get rid of these, uh, these bodies. At least that's, that, that'd be your one way to figure out how to out Mystic Mind, unless you have some other way um, which would be surprising to me because the only thing I can think of right now is Cosmo Joe. Unless you like have Cosmics and Twin Switchers and stuff in the in the main, which I mean I wouldn't put it past the deck, but at the same time it's not something I would immediately expect coming into you know like a uh, a tournament like this. So for turn we flipped up this nice white glared card that we have no idea what it is nice like again my apologies for that it just seems like it's always just that one side where there's a glare where the monsters uh and spells and monsters and spells and traps in those zones are um hard to see so we're going to pass turn we're going to set another uh, spell or trap here pass turn right back Yeah, unfortunately, we're just drawing a lot of Cosmo bodies. I guess I just don't know. I don't know how we out this. I guess we go for Cosmo Town again because you can actually just shuffle two back, draw another two, and see where you go from there. Just 
I'm really trying to figure out what the other out could be in the deck that you don't scoop the game up. Cause that's that's obviously the only way you would be still playing this game is if you have you know you have an out for the card. You just gotta find it. But we're gonna set another back row on our Cosmo player side here. Which tells me this has to be some kind of Cosmo stun deck or something, because like this is a lot of back row from what I remember for a Cosmo deck. I mean they had some back row that you have to respect. Like I said, Cosmo Cosmojo among them. But it was mainly just the monsters just go off and then you have to out them. So we're going to pass turn back to uh, Mystic Mine here. Duality into Double Extravagance and a Trio. That is... Uh, I mean, for you, that's fine. Honestly, that's fine. Because, <laughs> I mean, your opponent is clearly giving you no, no signs that he's going to actually out this anytime soon. And you're basically getting some draw power going here. So we're going to pass turn to discard the... Uh, goes in match and before we pass turn here we're gonna actually activate cos uh what's my cosmic excuse me compulsory to bounce both chain compulsory to bounce both of our monsters wow no oh, nope 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 we got got too greedy there yep we're gonna dark bribe one of those oh man i, I, <laughs> I thought i was tripping i saw another capacity and i'm like why didn't he set that it's actually we're two wow so he actually did have a game plan we we're trying to bounce both of his monsters to get rid of the mystic mind Actually, heads up thinking there. So we're gonna go ahead and activate our Cosmo Town again, which is it's just so good for this, like basically a magical mallet effect. Just like, yeah, I'm gonna take these four, shuffle these back in, and draw some more cards. Let's just make sure you never brick. Yeah, but um, it seems like Mystic Mindbird has an out to everything right now. Dark bribes, trios. I mean, it's something you expect from the deck, but still. Especially when you're a, a, more so of a combo deck that's looking to play against other combo decks in, in today's format. You just you got to go against that one back row deck that you ain't gonna see not a monster from it that lives off of Mystic Mind. And you just like in game two you might have this guy, game three you might definitely have him, but game one he's got you for sure. So we're gonna go ahead and set one, then. Summon out Tin Can. And pass turn. Gonna do a uh, pot of extravagance here. Oh, and like we're gonna banish six, draw two. Why not? Your opponent can't stop it. But I'm trying to figure out the thinking of actually, you know, just putting bodies back on the board. Yeah, because you went through all that to. to uh, Foster them back to your hand, and then turn around and just put them back out there. Well, oh, that's right. No, I'm I'm sorry. I forgot one of the monsters uh, was never actually bounced back because of compulsory being negated by Dark Bribe. So he actually just summoned Tin Can and pass turn. So my apologies on that, guys. I totally forgot about that. But as you can see on Mystic Mind Player side, we have the Wave Motion Cannon finally coming down. Oh man. Oh yep. It's it's about to get nasty. So we finally got to an, uh, a win con here. Gonna set one. Like, I should. I feel like I shouldn't have to explain wave motion cannon, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to after I explain this Cosmojo is coming down here. Basically, like I was telling you guys before, this card basically just targets one Cosmo on your side of the field. Uh, destroys it and then banishes a card on your opponent's side of the field or in their graveyard. So we have out of the Mystic Mind now. All I gotta do is these unknown back row, these rivalry, and wave motion cannon. So we're gonna start off with our Cosmo Joe shuffling back our, our witch. We're gonna go ahead and flip our tin cannon. Uses effect, tag out by banishing to summon. I believe that is our. Let me make sure here. I gotta make sure I got the right cards here. My apologies, guys. So we're tagging out our um, our dark our tin can, excuse me, into our dark eclipser. 
which was unfortunately met by Demise of the Land to get another Mystic Mind out. But for uh, as far as Dark, Dark Eclipse, or excuse me, goes, you cannot be targeted by your opponent's card effects, which is standard for most of the uh, bigger the bigger bodies in Cosmos. And then during your player's turn, when a trap card is activated, you can banish a Cosmo monster from your graveyard and negate the activation of the card if you do destroy it. Then they all have the same ability of destroy by battle of card effects. You can uh, banish them from the graveyard at a level seven or level seven or this time level eight or lower Cosmo from your deck to your hand. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and pass turn over to uh, Mystic Mine here. You see one counter on wave motion right now. That's a thousand damage. Um, and activate this pot of extravagance. Go ahead and draw draw two. Why not? But the action is going so fast, I forgot to explain the wave of motion cannon. For you guys who are unfamiliar with it, for each turn that passes by, wave of motion cannon puts a counter on itself, and it's basically a thousand damage for each counter that's on there. And then when you feel like you can send the card away, burn your opponent for that much damage. So sit there for X amount of turns. Right now, you see their opponent is at a thousand, you know, a thousand over um, the Mystic Mind Burn player because they've activated um, Upstart Goblin. So basically, nine nine counters. That's game for you, unless you find some other way to do some more burn damage to actually make it quicker for yourself. Um, but you see, off the extravagance, we got the duality, duality, then grab us a, um, forgot what card it was. I'm so busy talking about motion can I forgot what card it was. My apologies, guys. because uh, the game is just going so fast. Uh, usually people will take the time and think about these kind of things, but I guess against Mystic Mind, you have no reason to just think about this stuff. You just hurry up and just get it over with. So before Mystic Mind pass, you see, I think there's another Cosmojo here. And it's met by judgment. Oof. So we're gonna, yeah, we're gonna negate the Cosmojo with the uh, Solemn Judgment. However, we still get to use our uh, Eclipser effect. Because it's indeed still out it, if I'm not mistaken here. Let me double check. I believe it targets and destroys for cost, the Cosmojo. Uh, better be safe than sorry. Let me go ahead and double check for you guys. Put up here for the text up here for you guys so you can double check as well. Oh no, okay, so no, unfortunately, it only targets targeting to the cost, not target and destroy. Oh, that's very unfortunate. So, yeah, the, the Mystic Mind will be outed now, unfortunately, because of the misplay, but uh, set the game set at this point. Unless we're, unless we're, okay, we're reading here. Okay, might, might be a correction here. Okay, uh, oh, wow, okay, so we read it and still didn't catch it. That's, that's actually pretty funny. <laughs> I'm like, wow, okay. So I think we're on Cosmo, the Cosmo player's turn right here. Yeah, I figured we'd definitely turn around after we read the card, but I, I guess not. I said mistakes happen in the game. Nobody's perfect. So we're going to go now back to a turn. We're going to go ahead and normal summon out uh, our straw man, which basically has the same effect as the tin can, etc. You can quick effect, banish this card, especially on a level 3 or higher Cosmo from your hand, which will be our Dark Eclipser. Then we're going to get our, our for our 3,000 damage. So yeah, it's not looking very good for our Mystic Mind player right now. Because right now, life points are 8,100 to 1,000. Um, and you're down to like literally one Mystic Mind left in the deck. Then we're going to activate back to the front to summon out our Farm Girl, excuse me, our Dark Destroyer from um, the Graveyard. Activate the effect to pop itself to then summon out. Is that a forerunner? Or is. Oh, wow, that's game. Oh, that's a play by our Cosmo player. In which correction, before we move on to the next, next round, um, Slip Rider. The card was Slip Rider, not Forerunner. Which basically allows you to destroy a spell trap on the board and then, you know, he still swings for game. So, either way. Cosmos win game one. Let's get on to game number two. All right, guys, we're back with game number two. 
I'm assuming Miss Nate Bynes is going to go first here. Starting off with the duality. We see Kadrin Old Man twice and a pot of duality. Well, I know what I'm grabbing this time around. <laughs> so basically, Cauldron of a Man, um, Cauldron of Old Man, excuse me, is basically another burn card for the deck here. Uh, it's not as effective as a wave motion cannon, but it runs kind of similar to it, if I'm not mistaken. Put the card up for you guys so you can see it. So when this card is activated, you can place one counter on it. Once per turn during your standby phase, you can place another counter on this card. And then once per turn, you can activate one of these effects. Either gain 500 life points for each counter on this card or inflict 300 life points of damage to your opponent for each counter on this card. So it's a little slower way of getting to your, uh, your, your end goal here. But... Um, it's still effective. So you see, the first time around, oddly enough, we're going to go ahead and gain 500 life points. Uh, set three, pass the Cosmos. See a normal summon of a unknown card because of the glare. I am so sorry about this, guys. Um, I'm assuming it's Cos... I'm, yeah, assuming it's Farm Girl. Yeah, because we're doing 15, uh, 15 damage here. So we're going to do Farm Girl da damage for 1,500. And then I believe we're going to go ahead and pay 500 to tag. If I'm not mistaken, that's the effect here. Or to search, rather, excuse me. In which we will search for our Cosmo Town. Then use the other ability to tag out. There we go. I apologize, guys. I'm trying to basically f keep up with the cards here, but I'm having an issue with my uh, Wikipedia here. But basically what we did, where we um, used Farm Girl to search, then we tagged out to into our Dark Witch, swung it for another 22 damage, then tagged out again into our, um, I believe it was our Dark Destroyer, and got in another 3,000. Got our Cosmo Town, used Effect to grab back one of our Banish cards, which is Farm Girl, take 300 damage for that, set to past turn and of course here we're going to activate the mystic mine use cauldron to burn our opponent for six here think about setting one here and passing turn so we're going to draw for turn Gonna use the effect of Cosmo Town again to add back our witch. Lose 500 life points. We lose 100 life points for each um, for each uh, star on the monster that you're grabbing back or level in short. So we see right now it's 1861 with the life points in Cosmo Player's flavor here. Uh, it's not exactly find a way to out the Mystic Mind, which they should have way more outs in the deck now. Which you know what the deck is now. You have, like I said, you have the Cosmojo. You have possibly Cosmics, Twin Twisters, um, Harpy Feather Duster. Putting the options here to out this. We're going to start with our normal summon Farm Girl. Which probably tells us that we have maybe a Torrential or a, um, a Cosmojo in play here. And in response to some, we're going to activate Golden Match. Which is fine. I wonder what the play is now. We're going to use Gaza Town, put back our Witch, uh, shuffle up, draw one. You're gonna pass turn. Stand by face, put another counter of, on uh, the cauldron. Then we use cauldron burn for nine. So now it's 18 to 52. Draw for turn on Cosmos' turn. We're going to use Cosmos Town again. I said we're not in the worst spot right now. But we definitely have to find some way to uh, clear this back row if we want to make this an easy 
uh, two two game sweep. Um, because your opponent is low on life points, it, it like they're choosing to like burn you down instead of actually gaining life points themselves. So I guess they feel like they're comfortable right here, which that's that's understandable. That's reasonable. That's reasonable at this point. Um, but you have to find some way to out this if you're a Cosmo player quickly, or this will just, we'll just add up. Because at this point now you're doing you're getting done 12 damage. Next time it's gonna be 15. Um, just what do we? Is that an eradicator epidemic virus? Wow, but it's it's fine though. We have the judgment. But the thing is though, I believe it tributes for cost. Wow, did not see that coming. And the other fact was a um, dark eclipse, not dark destroyer. My apologies, guys, on that one. But yeah, either way, okay. So it's still fine here because we tribute the dark eclipse here for cost. Um, Mystic mind, yeah, you you, you judgment to protect your back row. But now you're still under, well, Mystic Mind is basically gonna be kaputty because now you have no monsters on the board. Well, I guess we're gonna check on everything to make sure we have done things correctly here. I'm checking for a ruling. I'm gonna go put up Eradicator up here for you guys so you can confirm yourselves as I search for it in my Pedia here. I'm trying to remember what the argument was on this, but it definitely does tribute for cost. And you declare a spell or a trap. So I don't know what the discrepancy was there, but now you're kind of in a, a weird spot now because 900 damage breathes over there and, and, and just swings for game. That's it. Um, but you do still have these two back row because we don't know what these are. We're going to activate back to the front, targeting our Dark Eclipser. Before we pass turn, we're gonna draw for turn here. Put the Eclipser in attack. Is this game? Okay, uh, before we swing in, we're gonna play it safe, I guess. Do Cosmo. Go ahead and draw draw two. Okay, we're okay. I think okay. Whoa, okay. I think we have a concession here. Yes, we do have a concession. So, Cosmos move on 2-0 to the next round, guys. Wow, that I don't know how to feel about that game. <laughs> Cuz um it was some weird moments, but at the same time, it is entertaining to see two decks that are not, you know, commonly known in the current format duking it out at the top table here. So, we're going to see like I said, Cosmos go on, move on to 1 and 0. Mystic Mind unfortunately drops down to 0 and 1 with I believe 3 rounds to go. So guys, it's been Rift Team Arsenal signing out. Peace, have a great day.